Another episode of the Michigan's Best Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking about the gap in learning that happens when school ends and school begins, the summer months. One of the ways to combat that is to get your kids to read during the summer. How do you do that? I know, right? But today, we're talking to Glenn Miller from Kids Read Now to find out how. And as I said, it is my honor today to talk to Glenn Miller from Kids Read Now. Glenn, how are you, my friend? I am doing great, Eric. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, it is my pleasure. As I said, to kind of set this interview up, you know, my school has enrolled in Kids Read Now, however that works, and you're about to tell me. And I was, I had never heard of the program and was super excited to see it. So let's start at the beginning because the beginnings of this organiz- organization, excuse me, are profound because it's kind of like this bifurcation of two incredible programs. So let's start at the beginning and kind of go to present day. Sure. So interestingly, this the whole thing began in a living room on a Sunday morning in Ohio. And uh, Lee Blory and his wife, Barb, our CEO, and his wife, Barb, they were discussing after having, you know, just sold a communications company for quite a large sum of money, what were they going to do next? And Barb is a literacy coach and teacher. Lieb was a communications entrepreneur. And they decided to attack the literacy rates uh, in our country, which, you know, fourth graders across the country, 65% of them are not reading proficiently. And they felt that uh, with the resources at their disposal um, and their expertise in this area, they could really do something to impact that stat as well as focus in on kids who are most vulnerable, economically disadvantaged kids. So Kids Read Now was born about 10 years ago. And um, in Michigan, we've worked with uh, nearly half of the, or actually just over half of the school districts in Michigan. And I was fortunate to work with the Michigan legislature to bring it to a broad audience in Michigan as well. So. And so, Glenn, how does the rollout work? So we'll just take, obviously, Michigan, because that's where we are. You're working with half. How do we get it to 100? Like, what what does that process look like? Right. Everybody is, uh, everybody's at a different point. Um, School districts have all kinds of interventions that they put together for summer uh, learning loss prevention, which is really what we're focused on. Um, So, you know, I meet with people who are, you know, in the post-pandemic world here or, or close to it, um, teachers are teachers are um, just fried and and getting getting um, folks to want to do something in the summertime or even have the bandwidth to do it is really challenging. So I meet with school districts who are ready to try something new, um, try something a little different, and and that is. Um, you know, working with a partner to serve their families and their kids in this way and keeping kids reading over the summer. Uh, so I, I I meet with folks that are interested in doing that. And and then the then the process begins from there. So so let's let's talk about that that summer learning loss because I know a lot of parents might might feel that tension but may not know how rampant that loss is. Glenn, can you put some numbers around what summer reading loss or summer learning loss I should say kind of equates to by the time we walk out in June and come back in the end of August or early September? Well, it it all depends on on generally the kids access to um to books and to enrichment over the summer but in general there's a three month loss in in reading level that is typically that typically happens particularly with economically disadvantaged kids um not so much their peers and so in fact some of their more well-off peers will actually increase over the summer because they have so that gap that happens, it gets wider every summer. And so what what we're trying to do um, is to reduce that loss that happens, that three months. And, and what we've been able to do with this program is to actually target those economically disadvantaged kids. They're actually coming back with not the loss, but even a little bit of gain over the summer. And so, so we're really happy with how that's gone. It's been a couple of universities doing research on our program that uh, have 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 found that to be true. So, yeah, I don't know if, you know, that three months, if you want a number, that's the number that we're worried about. But it multiplies because every year, you know, they're 
they're they're farther and farther behind. So one of the things that I found fascinating about the program is how it works, right? Because I think how you think a program coming from your school system is going to work is very different from how a your program works. So can you talk about how the kids sure. are involved in this process and what that does to excite them about reading? So the, there's a tip, the typical way that, that, that districts will kind of deal with this summer slide issue is they'll hand a bag of books to kids on the last day and say, go for it. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, but please, please keep reading over the summer. So we found that that really doesn't have a lot of, uh, it doesn't equate to any gain at the end of the the, the day. So um, our process involves kids first choosing the books they're going to read, which is different than a lot of programs, right? Um, you buy a bag of books off the shelf, someone else chose those books. It goes a lot farther when kids choose their own reading material. And so we give uh, teachers a leveled catalog. So kids are picking books that are just right for them over the summer. They pick books they're going to love. And then once they do that, we start to mail them one at a time every 10 to 14 days. And that's what develops the momentum. That's what creates the enthusiasm for reading. Kids love to get mail. Uh, and so we, we've we capitalized on that. And the nice thing is they'll get 100% participation because they've all got a mailbox. All right. We, we don't have to load them in the car and bring them somewhere to a summer program. Uh, and then a couple other things that we do that are unique is, is that through the experience, we're constantly engaging with parents. We call parents weekly. We text, email parents weekly with comprehension questions that they can ask. They don't have to know anything about the science of reading, uh, but if they pr ask the questions that we provide, we know that comprehension in the, in, in the reading is going to be maximized. And so we provide a resource for parents at their fingertips. We translate those questions into over 100 languages so that conversations are happening in the language that happens at home. Uh, and then we provide data on feedback on that. Uh, we ask parents to report that they've had a conversation and we provide that information to the school district so they can have some idea of whether or not this thing is working, right? Uh, rather than just sending out and hoping. <laughs> so that's that's kind of how the whole thing works. And, and it's really, um, you know, the data piece has been very helpful to school districts because uh, in this day of funding, you know, uh, challenges. It's important to know that you have some numbers to look at when you're looking at spending spending dollars on a program like this. So, well, it's funny. Over the weekend, I was talking to my daughter who has struggled to kind of get excited about reading outside of school, but then she found sure. this author that she absolutely fell in love with, and she's sitting on the couch this weekend, finishing like the fourth book in three weeks of from this particular wow. author. And she turns right. to me and she goes, "Because I." I read a lot and hope that they model that. But she's like, dad, is this how you read a lot? And I'm like, well, there's two tricks here. One, you have to find something that you like to get you excited about it. And I said, people who read a lot quit a lot of books because if the book doesn't excite you, you've got to keep reading. You can't, don't struggle through it, move on to the next thing. But it, it's been very fun to watch both my kids kind of discover their different lanes where they want to spend their time, which is why I was so excited to talk to you what is something, you know, I, I know that you've got some stats on your website that, you know, 94% of teachers or sorry, 94% of parents endorse the program. 86% of teachers endorse this program. If there are parents that are watching this statewide and are, are like, this sounds amazing. How do we connect you with their school system if they're not already engaged? The website, uh, kidsreadnow.org is probably the fastest way to do that. Uh, there's a, there's a form they can fill out that will connect them with um, myself or another uh, representative that we can re reach out directly to that person and we'll ask what school district are you with here's how we can here's how we can get the ball rolling so that's probably the best way to do that all right my friend and the last question I, I mean I obviously if I have you I have to ask you what are you reading right now what am I reading I am reading um, John Steinbeck's East of Eden right now I, I'm actually my wife and I do a lot of read aloud so I, I read it. I read aloud to her uh, many times the, on uh, these books and we're, we're in a book club which is another fun way to to continue to read as an adult is to get together with others that like to read as well so yeah that's that's what's going on in my life in the world of reading. <laughs> 
All right, my friend, it has been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, let's catch up maybe uh, at the end of the summer and see how the program went. Great. Thank you, Eric. Take care.